Hello. In this video, I will discuss some of the properties of polymers that make them so flexible and extendable. First, what is a polymer? A polymer is a large molecule composed of a chain of smaller molecules called monomers that are all similar to one another. There are many examples of polymers that you will be familiar with from everyday life, such as the rubber in your car's tires, the latex in party balloons, or the polyester in your clothes. The DNA and proteins in your cells are also examples of biopolymers. They are long chains made of similar building blocks, nucleotides in the case of DNA, and amino acids in the case of proteins. One thing that all of these polymers have in common is that they are able to stretch and bend, and they are able to store energy by stretching. This can be seen clearly in the case of a bungee jump. A person jumps off of a high platform with their life entirely in the hands of a polymer cord, which is able to store all of that gravitational energy by stretching. Another example is that of a rubber slingshot. In this case, the rubber band is stretched out and then released, shooting forward a projectile with enough energy to shatter a bottle. Aside from just stretching, polymers are very flexible and can be folded up into all kinds of intricate shapes. Here we see the amazing and complex process of DNA replication, which is mediated by several proteins. This process is only possible because the proteins are flexible enough to fold into complicated shapes and the DNA is flexible enough to be unraveled and looped around to be replicated. So how are polymers able to achieve this level of flexibility and extensibility? To understand this, we will think about polymers using what's called the freely jointed chain model. This model assumes that the polymer is like a long chain of beads, and the links holding the beads together can take on any angle they like. Now consider that each of these beads is undergoing Brownian motion the random motion that all small particles undergo as a result of being constantly bumped into by the smaller particles that surround them. This simulation shows the effect of all the monomers in a polymer undergoing Brownian motion. The result is a polymer that is constantly wiggling around and able to fold itself in an infinite number of ways. So this freely jointed chain model explains how a polymer is able to stretch and bend. But now let's look at another simulation to see clearly how Brownian motion enables a polymer to actually store energy, as we saw in the cases of a bungee jumper or a slingshot. In this simulation, we start out with a short polymer in its totally stretched out state. As each monomer undergoes Brownian motion, we see that the polymer contracts, much like a stretched out spring would. If we repeat these simulations many times, we can graph the average extension of the polymer as a function of time. And what we find is that it contracts to an equilibrium length, which is equal to the link length times the square root of the number of beads. So this is an example of what's called an entropic force. There is a force trying to compress the polymer to its equilibrium configuration that is a result of entropy. An easy way to think about this is that there is only one set of angles between the links where the polymer is fully extended. That's the set where all the angles are equal to 180 degrees. But there are very many sets of angles where the polymer is folded. The equilibrium configuration is just the one which corresponds to the highest number of different sets of angles between monomers. So as the polymer randomly wiggles around due to Brownian motion, it is far more likely to find itself in equilibrium than to find itself extended. Using some statistical mechanical arguments, it is possible to derive the force on a freely jointed chain as a function of its extension, as shown in the formula here. If you group all of those constants together, you find that this equation has the exact same form of Hooke's law for a spring. But perhaps most interesting is that this equation tells us that as you heat up the polymer, it will want to contract, whereas most materials will expand when heated. This can be demonstrated with a rubber band heat engine. As the rubber bands get heated, they compress more, moving the center of mass of the wheel slightly to the left, causing it to rotate. I hope this video has made clear how Brownian motion and entropy play a role in some of the fundamental properties of polymers.